Today we'll look at how to play the Corvid Conspiracy in Root. This is an absolutely fantastic game and this faction is really hard to learn. As you can see it requires careful planning and the utmost secrecy. I agree definitely with that sentiment. So when you're beginning the game, the uh, factions play it as usual with the Corvid. You get to place one warrior in each clearing of a different suit. You're not limited by having ones next to each other, you can put them anywhere. I'll be putting out a strategy guide that will talk about what the best locations are to do this. In the tutorial, it tells me exactly where to put them. So for instance, starting right with that airy roost there, uh, I don't know if that's necessarily the best option. In fact, I think it probably isn't, but uh, we'll get to that in the strategy guide. So during your turn, you get to spend a card from your hand to place one warrior in each clearing matching its suit. So as you can imagine, you end up all over the board. In daylight, we can take up to three of the following actions. So you can move your characters, you can battle, you can lay a plot, or you can trick. So the trick is swapping. We'll get to each of these functions later. So uh, the first one is plotting. This is the core of how you score points. So in this case, here are our options. We can bomb, raid, extort, or snare. Now, I believe that extortion is the very best to get started on but bombs are the most spectacular. Raids are a way to get more players on the board. And finally, we have snares, which essentially limit the travel of other players. They all have their function. So we're starting with um, the extortion, which if placed in a clearing with somebody else, will steal cards from that person. Now this is important with the scoring. Whenever you have a plot, you'll score one point, but if you already have another plot up, that'll be two points. If you already have two other plots up, that's three points. So you want to lay down your plots. If you can get an effect from it, great, but then you also want to keep your plots defended and on the, on the map. And this is the challenging part because you can see we've only got nine Corvids left to get on the board. And because of the way they're placed, they seem to be all over the place. So here we're consolidating our troops and bringing them together. And this tutorial wants us to bring them towards the airy forces so we can wreak some havoc, havoc there. Now, normally you won't be up against just a single player. It is actually ideal if you are up against just one player because other players on the board will be completely trying to take you out. Now, we are very weak in both locations, so this looks like an easy win. They've got a roost, they've got three soldiers, and we've got easy pickings on that plot. But uh, first, the, the plot is not revealed, so we can actually now reveal that. Uh, before that, we're going to do some crafting. So for every face up or face down plot, you can do crafting and we got the one point from that card there. So now we go to the reveal plots. So we have to have a warrior in that square, which we do. We score our one point. Now, in that case, most times you won't have the luxury of having only one troop and somehow defending that plot because uh, three airy warriors would easily just wipe us out. So we can discard a card now to recruit and we do so in that particular clearing. So you would recruit in all of, say, the mouse clearings if that's the card you play, uh, so long as you have enough troops to do that. If you don't have enough troops, it will ask you where to put them. So uh, now we're into our movements. So you can see we've got three moves left. So our daylight action will be to move our warriors to consolidate there. Uh, it's always good to get down at least a plot per turn. They are looking like they want us to bomb these guys. So, um, well, in this case, oh, they're looking for a raid. Okay. So when that raid is removed, then we'll get to place warriors adjacent. So that's actually a good way of consolidating troops around the area that you want to fortify. Uh, the snare now, it's talking about how it prevents us from, uh, prevents opponents from placing or moving its troops out of that clearing. So we're limiting their mobility. We're extorting for an extra card each turn. And we're also getting ready to exterminate. So exerting is a way that you can spend a card in order to play an extra turn. So that's essentially what we're doing here is um, sacrificing our cards for that extra movement to protect that plot and also to set up to reveal it next turn. Okay, so we've got three plots on the map, which is great because we can start to compound points. So what is this plot you have hatched near our roost? It cannot stand, I say, it must be exposed. 
So now an enemy can expose a plot by revealing a card and guessing which of the four plots it is. So this is important that you aren't actually predictable on this or they'll just easily remove all your plots without even having to fight you. If they're wrong, we get their card. All right, so they think we put a snare there and that's the wrong guess. So we get a card. Aha, they fell for our bluff. Their guess is wrong. Now this is where we actually have the snare if they'd guessed it correctly. So they're just gonna battle us. But because we have embedded agents, uh, anywhere you have a, a face down plot, then you get one extra um, hit essentially. So we take one of them out automatically, which is great. Even if we don't have a defender there, we still take out that, that troop. So there's minimal defense available to you. And I say minimal because it's, you know, everybody else seems to have way more troops. So we have nothing to craft this turn. So we're gonna skip. We'll reveal the snare, which will limit their ability to move. We score one for each plot token on the map. Revealed plot token. So let's score this one as well. Do the raid. So we get three now because we've got three. So you can see that getting your plots down and um, getting multiple plots protected is the way to score a lot of points for the Corvids. Okay, and we do have to place a plot in a clearing that doesn't already have one. So I like that corner placement there because it's just slightly out of the way for the airy. So it might take them a couple of turns to get there. So we're looking at setting up a bomb right now that won't do anything. And we had to sacrifice the troop in order to place that plot. So we should be getting our warriors consolidated by bringing them together and bringing them where we need to defend. I mean, two Corvids really isn't great, but uh, oh, here's the trick move. This is fun. So that bomb isn't in a great place. So we could, or in this case, actually, it looks like it wants us to move the snare. Okay, all right. We can do that so you can flip those two around and now both of the uh, plots have to be either face up or both have to be face down to flip them and in this way because they can't move out of that area so this is actually a really good trick if you're paying attention to the airy then we foil their their movement uh, because they can no longer uh, be commanded so that's a great way to take them down as ever, they suffer the consequences. Okay, so that's mostly what we need to learn in order to play. Uh, we don't have a warrior where the bomb plot is up at the top, so we can't reveal that. So um, the game's telling us that it's actually better to wait anyways until somebody's in that space, so that's completely fine. So let's send warriors to the fox clearings. So they're really spread all over the map. But with only one opponent, I mean, we could set up plots galore here. It would be quite easy to finish this off. Okay, now something else that's actually quite useful is because you can appear wherever you want, you can actually bring the fight to them in anywhere that, that's undefended or, or lightly defended. So like the Vagabond, we move regardless of the clearing rule restrictions. So that's fantastic. Now, if you're playing against the Woodland Alliance, you still do have to pay them the cost of the card for moving into their square. But here we have a, a four on three, essentially, because we have the two plus the roost. That worked all right. We've got one move left. So we could take out that roost. And this is actually a great way to supplement your points. Just finish off these easy targets. Just remember that you will make enemies of anyone who you begin to target mercilessly. So, and they'll begin to unite the board if you're playing against human players, they'll begin to point out how you need to be taken down. So, um, so in this game, they're asking us to score 15 points because there's only one enemy or destroy enemy pieces with a bomb, bomb to finish the scenario. So um, I won't make you suffer through the rest of the gameplay here. Uh, we, can, we can speed this up. This was my very first time playing as the Corvid. So when I originally did this, I still wasn't entirely sure what I was doing, um, but I'll, I'll give you a 
little quick gameplay here. I mean, the quickest way to do this would be to lay plot, 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 and then just run the points up very quickly. Um, the bomb, we could have a couple of plots face down, and one of them could be in a square where they have a roost, uh, and then we could flip those and uh, create destruction. So uh, anyways, that's how you play the Corvid Conspiracy. Very cool faction, and I will be posting a strategy guide on this, so I hope you check that out. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that now. And remember to get out there, get gaming, and be legendary.